Thanks, Jess, for leading us uh, in our prayers this morning. I wonder if you've ever been in a storm. I was in a storm once when I was camping with my family, back when I was about eight or nine years old. And now I'm a heavy sleeper, and it takes an awful lot to wake me up. People in the past have tried kicking me, um, putting things on top of me, and they're still not waking me up. Um, people have even tried tickling me, and that still doesn't work. And so for this thunderstorm to have woken me up, it was a big deal, as my family often joked to me about. The thunder was absolutely clapping. There's, we were in the middle of a tent, it was lashing it down with rain. The wind was howling through the forest that we were in, and it was scary. I was eight or nine, I didn't know what to do, other than to get out of bed, go and find my mum and dad in the tent, start to clamber on the top of their sleeping bags towards them. And as I did, as I got about halfway, a big flash of lightning uh, appeared. And my face, something like this apparently happened in the middle of the night, two, three o'clock in the morning, eight, nine years old, absolutely petrified. Storms are a scary thing because we don't know what's going to happen in it. We don't know when it's going to end. And I feel like for the moment where we're at as a nation, it may in some form or another feel a bit like a storm. We don't know when this is going to end. We don't know what's going to happen. We're out of control of it. We're going to read the story in just a moment from Mark's Gospel. With Jesus with his friends in the middle of a storm. So if you've got your Bibles, get them. I've got my paper one here. Somewhere on your screen you'll be able to click and find the electronic Bible uh, to read alongside me chatting here. Uh, and then to the right of your screen where I'm pointing now, there'll be some phrases and some words that will appear as I go. So you might want to be taking some notes uh, to help you as you chat in your communities and you chat with those uh, in your household afterwards about some of the things that I'm saying uh, this morning. Kids, if you're watching this, at the end of this, on the live chat, there's going to be a story, there's going to be a video story, that is, there's going to be a craft for you to do, there's going to be a prayer activity, there's going to be a challenge for you to do in this next week. All of that will be dropped into the live chat when we finish our service uh, in just a short while. But if you're with me, Mark 4, starting at verse 35, we're going to read to the end of verse 41. So let's go. That day, when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious storm started up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Jesus got up rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Jesus in his boat with his friends. They start to go out. Jesus has been teaching a big crowd of people. And they're rowing, row, row, row your boat. But they're not going down a gently little stream. They're going into a lake where it's notorious. It's quite common, in fact, for storms to start and to start to throw waves over the sides of the boat. I can just imagine them trying to scoop it out with their hands, trying to get their flip-flops, trying to scoop the water up, maybe with their mouths spitting out the boat over the edge. I don't know what they would have done in that moment. It's just a funny image to think of them trying to do that. But at the same time, it's not funny because they probably felt like their lives were in danger, felt like they were in danger of drowning. It may feel as a nation at the moment that we're in some sort of storm, as I said. Of course, we've got beautiful weather this past week and there's forecasts for that into this coming week. As I look outside now from where I'm filming in my house, um, it's about 15, 16 degrees. And I've just been sitting uh, just before I filmed this, having my lunch outside. It's been a lovely week. And yet, at the same time, we're all rightly so at this time, told by the Prime Ministers to stay at home. And as we do that over the next couple of weeks, as we've done it this past week, 
I think there's five ways in which uh, we might relate to, if not already relate to, this first uh, week gone. First is scared. I think some of us are going to be feeling scared because we don't know what's happening. We don't know when this is going to end. We don't know when we're going to see next friends or family in person. Some of us may even be scared the fact that we not, don't have a job to go to or that our job might be in danger or that we don't know when our exams for our university is going to be or our GCSEs or our SATs. I think some of us are also going to feel troubled. Troubled if you're living on your own at this moment. Limited interaction with humans over these next uh, two weeks and the week just gone and maybe beyond. You might even be troubled for a loved one that you know is living on their own and is in self-isolation at this moment in time. For some of us, maybe those of us who are key workers or those of us who are critical workers on the front line dealing with important decisions, key decisions, the stress, it might feel overwhelming. Decision after decision, wave after wave over these coming weeks. Equally, you might be a parent at home trying to work out how do I teach my child or my children all this stuff that these qualified teachers at school do, and yet I have not a clue what two plus two equals. I think also some of us, those of us who've got ants in our pants, are probably also going to feel a little bit restless. That one bit of exercise each day we're allowed, not going to be enough. It's not been enough. And because of that, we may begin to feel a little bit moody with one another. Moody, a little bit snappy, a little bit short-tempered with our wife or our husband, with your brother, your sister, the people you live with, your mom, your dad. We're going to feel, I think, all of these things over these coming weeks if we've not already. But just as Jesus was with the disciples in the storm and he didn't leave them, Jesus is with us at this moment. Jesus is still in control. He uses the power of God's word to still it. Three simple words, quiet, be still. I wonder if we can use the power of God's word by reading this at this time to fuel our prayers as we seek to pray for our nation. There's five, there's five ways in which I think we will be behaving and responding in these next few weeks. But here's what I want to suggest, five ways in which we can counteract all of that. We can centre ourselves, we can remind ourselves that Jesus is with us in the storm. Here's the first one, breathe. When it feels like it's all becoming a bit too much, breathe. <sighs> Remember. God is in control. Breathe. Breathe in God's grace. Be still. Be quiet. Be still and know that God is God, as the psalmist writes. I think you can also remember. Remember what God has done, who God is, what God is like. God doesn't change. God hasn't lost control. Our psalm, which we're reading today in our 150 psalms in the lead up to our 150th anniversary, is Psalm 77. And in Psalm 77, I'd encourage you to read at some point later today. It speaks of remembering the God of yesterday, of what he's done, the form of things of which he's done. Remember, one of the reasons why I think Jesus says, why are you so afraid Do you still have no faith? I think it's probably because they've forgotten who they're with in the boat. They've forgotten who Jesus is and what he'd already done for them by that point in Mark's Gospel and in their other lives that we, of course, don't have recorded for us before that. Remember what God has done for you, who he is and what he's like. Then ask, as you remember, ask, what do you want God to do for you in the moment? or for the person for whom you're maybe troubled about. Ask, ask, seek, knock, Jesus says, and it shall be given to you. And as we ask, we can visualise and turn our eyes. Our series, this Lent, Turn Your Eyes, 
It's such a good thing for us to be remembered. Fix your eyes, the author of Hebrews says, on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Visualise him in the room with you as you deal with the situation you're confronted with, where it feels like wave after wave is just onslaughting, filling your boat, so to speak. Visualise him there with you or with the person who you're praying for. Visualise that he's with you. He's with that person, giving them the biggest and best hug that anyone could ever want or imagine. And finally, what does Jesus do in the middle of the storm after they said, Teacher, don't you care us if we drown? The next few words tell us what happens. He got up. He elevated himself. He lifted himself up so that he could deal with the storm that he was faced with. Here's the reality for you this afternoon. If you're watching this at home, this afternoon being, as you watch this and you think about this this afternoon, think about this. As a follower of Jesus, you are seated in the heavenly realms of Christ. You are elevated above the storms. So allow that position, allow that place to be the means by which you view the storms that you face at the moment or you face in the coming days and weeks. I wonder if you've noticed those words that I've been saying this morning as they flashed upon the screen just here. We might be scared. We might be troubled. We might feel overwhelmed. We might feel restless. And we might feel moody. But Jesus does not leave us in the storm. No. We're to breathe. We're to remember. We're to ask. We're to visualise and we're to elevate. Count the ten. Breathe, remember, ask, visualise and elevate. And when the storms are coming and they're trying to get into your boat and they're trying to overwhelm you and trouble you and scare you and make you feel moody and restless, breathe, remember, ask, visualise, elevate. And as you elevate, I have no doubt that the storm, the situation you're confronted with, it will cease and it will still. There's going to be some questions for you to chat about in your communities, in your households, for you to perhaps ponder on your own as you are at home. Kids, there's going to be that stuff dropping very soon on the live chat for you to take part in and do. And as you be brave in the storm, know that Jesus is with you, beside you. And he's ready to step in and calm the storm. So my encouragement to you this week, brave the storm. Brave the storm. Would you pray with me before I hand back over to Jess? Jesus, thank you that you are in control. Thank you that you are there in the storm and you're there in the calm. Help us to fix our eyes on you, to visualise you with us, to turn our eyes to you at this time. And in doing so, Jesus, we ask that you would be with those at this time who are feeling scared and troubled and overwhelmed and restless and moody. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.